Is it hot? Uh, it is. Icy hot. Icy hot. It has no smell. Yeah, it's, it's really clear, but it's, it's wow. Uh, God, it's cold. You know that feeling when you take something out of fridge, uh, like right out of the freezer, and you hold it for a few seconds, and it's like, and it kind of spies with your your hand. Yeah, and it's this is that cold. <laughs> this cold. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Josip Broz Tito was the president of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia from 1953 until his death in 1980. Back in 1953, as the Cold War was heating up, President Tito directed the Yugoslav People's Army to start building the bunker, which is known as ARKD0, which stands for Army Skaratna Komanda, Army War Command. From the par parking place, yes, we have to walk. They said it's gonna take five minutes. Yeah, and the most weird thing is there is no clear information how to get here because you have to go to the city center to buy a ticket. Yeah, you first you need to find a place where they sell those tickets. Yeah, and I think it's like one or two in the entire city. So you basically need to go first to the city, buy tickets, uh -huh. and then return. And you need two copies one for the security and another for the guide, guide. yeah you know, otherwise they won't let you in yeah and it costs 10 euros per person and uh, also you can buy a whole tour from sarajevo from the capital and it costs 50 euro per person yeah and they drive you on a huge bus yeah like no normal tourist bus yeah but good thing about that bus it has a priority ah uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. It's like, I don't know how many people right now. 50? I don't know. From, from the looks of it, like we got maybe like maybe 30 people walking oh, yeah. with us, uh, but uh, we haven't seen people from the bus yet. Oh, yeah. The bunker was made so that in case of a nuclear war, it could be a shelter for the Supreme Command staff and Tito, his family and his close associates. In 1979, the construction was completed after 26 years, with a total cost of 4.6 billion US dollars. Tito was already critically ill by that time, therefore he never saw his bunker fully functional. From the outside, the bunker looks like three unremarkable houses in an isolated natural setting located along the Neretva river. The rest is a horseshoe-shaped tunnel that goes deep into the rock. The bunker is 202 meters long and 280 meters deep. And people didn't know about the bunker until the 1990s, when Yugoslavia collapsed and it was finally revealed to public. Those buildings that you could see outside. Building number one is Tito's above ground residency. Building number two for the army. And building number three for the people who do technical tasks on the bunker. Second part is this tunnel here, and his job was to amortize the nuclear attack of 20 to 25 kilotons of power. The third most important part is this protected area, which is 6,400 square meters, and it's connected to 12 different blocks. Those interconnected blocks could accommodate up to 350 people for up to six months, 300 military service and maintenance staff, and the rest 50, including Tito, his family and associates. The most important blocks included the hospital and laboratory, communication and operation centers equipped really well back then. Yeah, I guess. Wow. Can you take this one out? <coughs> take this one. 
He's an engineer. Mm, okay. <laughs> what is this actually? I don't know, it's probably like a breaker of sorts. Mm, okay. Yeah, I guess. Or a switch. Yeah, but it looks like a breaker actually. Like uh, this one, like a phone thing, you know, when you can yeah, yeah, yeah. Also. Uh, switch channels from one to another, so it's a communication channel. The facility had two conference rooms, cable television access, direct phone links to the presidency. Also, water storage block with 170 cubic meter water tanks and running water drawn from natural wells located within the mountain. Climate control block included a complex ventilation system running inside the bunker, which could support the temperature between 21 and 23 degrees Celsius, 70-73 Fahrenheit, and humidity between 60 and 70 percent. The ventilation system was launched back then when electricity was set up in the bunker, and it is still keeps running. The power block was providing electricity for the whole bunker and was equipped with massive engines and generators. They also had fuel and oil storage with containers capable of holding 50 tons of oil. The maintenance engineers had a full stock and storage for all necessary spare parts and each system was equipped with a backup in case the primary failed. President Tito's block consists of five rooms, one for his secretary and party leaders, Tito's office, his bedroom, the room of Yugoslav First Lady Jovanka Broz, and the relaxation room. Everything is really well preserved, especially furniture. Overall, there are more than 100 rooms in the bunker. Offices and dormitories for staff, bathrooms, kitchens and dining rooms, laundry unit. Also, bunker now serves as a meeting point for artists from across the region, Europe and the world. On the walls along the corridors you can find artworks of those people that were brought here within the project biennial of contemporary art.
welcome to Neum. 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 For some reason, the biggest part of the Adriatic shores belong to Croatia. Which and is right there. It's like the, the yeah, bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a Croatian bridge, bridge already. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. They have a teeny tiny part of it. Uh, it's like a bottleneck, basically, between the sea and the biggest part of the country. And uh, it's probably 10 kilometers wide only, so yeah. you can squeeze through this bottleneck to get <laughs> to the sea. Yeah, which is really tiny. Yeah, but, but still it's doable. Well, now we're gonna go and try to find a place to swim. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> Even though the water is, for the most people, it's warm, but for me it's actually cold. <laughs> Welcome to Iceland, guys. Hope my sacrifice will be remembered. Actually, after a while, it's not that bad. cold, especially at the bottom, but it was a good dive. Okay, so it's now my turn. The worst is that it hurts coming in the rocks. Yeah. Go for a dive. There you go. And they actually sharp. Yes, they seem to sharp, and uh, I'm not used to walk barefooted, so for me it was quite a struggle. Upstairs, it was too hot, so it's like feels like you burn your feet. Yeah. Yeah, but there is actually it's not that bad. It's like refreshing, not not even chilly. Yeah. This thing is what? Church. Yes, it's actually a church, and here they have their own football field. Yeah, I've never seen such a design. Yes, it's, uh, it's, it looks it's like like a spaceship to like me. Like a spaceship, yes, that's right. This is cool, and they even have a fountain, but it's not on, unfortunately. And one AC. Yeah. For the whole building. Yeah, this is really cool.
good morning from the city called Trebinia, guys. And we wanted to show you that cool bridge. That's, yeah, that's... and this river especially. Have a look how clear the water is. Yeah, it's not only clear, it's also so cold. This river actually is known to be as the longest sinking river in the world. 95 or 96 kilometers of it uh, flows above the water and, uh, and 90 kilometers yeah. under the ground. <laughs> so fresh. Oh, it's actually nice. Try it. This is uh, the most famous part of the city. It's Very city center. In the night, they have a lot of uh, parties. You know, people walking around. Yeah, restaurants, uh, nightlife, in a full blast. It's hot outside during the day, so in the evening when it's slightly better, people go out and yes, they hang out. They go to all those restaurants. There are a couple of nightclubs. That you that you can hear from every part of the city. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to walk down the river. It is so beautiful in the evening. They have pretty nice riverfront. In May and June 1943, during World War II, there was a huge battle known as the Battle of Sutjeska between the Axis powers, including Germany and Italy, and the Yugoslav partisans led by Marshal Josip Broz Tito. The battle took place in the mountains of Yugoslavia, now Bosnia and Herzegovina. The Yugoslav partisans were trying to escape from the Axis forces and faced lots of challenges like bad weather and tough terrain. Despite these difficulties, they managed to break through and keep fighting against the Axis. It was a tough battle, but the partisans showed great determination. In 1971, a memorial complex was built here to commemorate the Battle of Sutjeska, which now attracts thousands of visitors every year.